So today I've got some more Warzone 2 tips and tricks that are going to help you improve Warzone 2 incredibly fast and the best part about all of them is they require no skill. I'm not going to be teaching you any tactics or anything that you're going to have to actively implement. Instead I'm going to tell you things that you can change right away and things you can set up before you even hop into a match that are going to increase your chances of winning those matches exponentially. Now the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about today is going to be the audio. The audio in this game is completely scuffed and the amount of times I have died by some little bastard running up from behind that I can't even hear and killing me is getting ridiculous. However, I do have some settings that you can change with your audio that are going to make it at least bearable. Now the first thing you want to change is change your audio mix to headphones bass boost. For me personally, this is the best at highlighting footsteps especially and also if you look at exclusive aces video we did on the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, he also suggests using headphone bass boost because this is going to give you the clearest footstep audio in the game. What I have done is change my music volume all the way down to zero because I found sometimes in Warzone at least there seems to be some music playing for some reason I guess it's to add an atmosphere however it does mask other noises that you need to be able to hear like footstep noises so I've turned the music volume all the way down to zero then I've turned the dialogue volume down to 20 so that those announcers that are telling you that the circle's closing and that the loadouts are coming in are extra quiet but you can still hear them so you still get those cues I've kept effects volume up at 100 this does mean that I can still hear explosions really really clearly but also it's not affecting the footstep audio and then I've changed my hit marker volume down to 70. You still want to be able to hear those hit markers to get that feedback to know that you're hitting your enemies. However, if you're in a gunfight and you have your hit marker volume too loud, this is going to stop you being able to hear anyone who is coming to third party you. So I've turned this down to 70 and then finally my voice chat volume is down to 10. To be honest, this could be turned all the way down to zero. However, if you are communicating with people a lot in proximity chat, then obviously you're going to want to have this turned up. I myself don't tend to do that very often as I have my proximity chat set to push to talk. The reason I keep it at 10 is so that I can hear people when I am in engagements and quite often they do give themselves away. However, I don't want this super loud. I don't want to hear all the children screaming in my ear in the pregame. So I've turned this down to 10 so that I can hear people when I need to, but it's not overbearing and overwhelming. Next, I'm going to quickly breeze over three class setups, three guns that absolutely anyone can use. It doesn't matter if you're a professional Call of Duty player or if you've literally just started playing the game today these three classes pretty much play themselves they are that good what i'm going to do is i'm going to briefly breeze through these classes for you and then i'm going to give you a breakdown in a screenshot that you can all take a look at at the end with all the tunings on so i don't have to take too much of your time now the first one we're going to talk about i did go over in a video is the rpk i've gone for the tac 597 barrel the aim opv4 sight which is absolutely incredibly overpowered the lockstock kt85 the ftac ripper 56 the 762 high velocity ammo and that's about it for the RPK. Next is the TAC 56 and for this I've gone for the 17.5 Tundra Pro Barrel, the FTAC Castle Comp, the FTAC Ripper 56 and the 40 round mag with the AIM OPV4 again because this sight is the best at giving you less visual recoil. And then finally the gun that I would suggest that literally everyone has in every loadout is going to be the Fennec 45 and with this I've gone for the Schlager ULO 65 Laser, the Forge TAC Ninja, the Fennec Mag 45, the Fennec Stippled Grip, and the Agile Assault 7 stock. Again, I'm going to show you all of the tunings for all of these guns so you can take your screenshots then, but in my humble opinion, any one of these guns is going to take you very, very far. And if you're not using these guns, you're going to put yourself at a serious disadvantage. And then finally, I just want to go over the best throwables in the game. Now, for me, I would always choose for my lethal either a drill charge or a Semtex. Now, Semtexes are great. They're the staple. They're just a simple sticky grenade. Basically, there's not much more I can say about them. However, drill charges I have been using on every single class because they are invaluable. So many times in this game, you'll come across an enemy who is camping in a building or in a toilet or on a roof and drill charges are perfect at rooting these little rats out. Even if they're on a roof and you're one floor below them, you, you can throw the drill charge at the ceiling and it will come up on the roof and then get that enemy and then sometimes you can even down them. And then like in the clip I'm showing you here, I smoke on the floor and then I throw the drill charge to the left of the door and this cracks the enemy which when coupled with the smoke allows me to push out onto the rooftop and take down two enemies in a 2v1 situation. The drill charge for me is a must have in any loadout and if you get to grips with how it works, you're seriously 
and some improvements when using it in your game. And then onto tacticals, I would always 100% suggest that you take flushes. Now in Warzone 1, everyone was running stuns. However, the stun effect in Warzone 2 does not last any way near as long as it did in Warzone 1. Plus, whilst you are stunned, you can still see. This means you can tell if someone's in front of you, and this means you can still shoot when someone is in front of you, and then the aim assist will do the rest. However, with a flash, your screen goes completely white. Like, the flashes in this game look like you've just been fucking mooned by God himself. The flashes in Warzone 2 are incredibly strong, and when you couple that with the lack of footstep audio in the game, if you flash someone, they have no idea where you are coming from, and this means that the aim assist isn't going to help them because they're not going to know when to shoot, and you'll be able to get some easy kills. But anyway, guys, I really hope that these tips were useful for you. I really hope that it helps you get some wins. Let me know down in the comments, and for those of you who have watched these videos for a while, you'll know that I love to see you six around until the end, so if you're still here, I'd like you to let me know by answering this question down in the comments. Would you rather listen to the Lion King soundtrack all day, every day for the rest of your life, or punch a hive of hornets? Anyway, that's it from me today. I'm Average Joel. Peace.